Welcome back, everybody. It's Farm to the Show. It's Chris Dickerson and Paul Yanish, and we are back for another episode, week number five, I believe. And we're coming in hot this week because we got opening day, the day that we've been planning for, for, you know, everybody's been planning for, for seven weeks. Everybody's shipping up, moving out of Arizona and Florida. We see the exhibition games being played across the league. And, you know, we've seen little bit of preview it's been exciting this the last couple days to get a little preview of these opening day crowds back in san francisco and vegas and uh you know getting these these teams in front of their home crowds and i would be remiss if we didn't have a little bit of nostalgia uh today for opening day and my man paul yanish welcome to the show are you fired up I'm fired up, dude. Hey, man, I know you. maybe everybody can't tell, but I got my uh, old school Reds jersey on, opening day. Fired up about it, man. It, uh, it was fun while it lasted. I wish we could still be there, but I can still wear the jersey, right? With the Nuxie patch, that's right. Because I think, yeah, mine, mine got to have had to have mine on there as well. And like you said, I'm going to have to go back in and into the stash and, uh, you know, break in the case of emergency. Like you said, I'm going to have to go back and, and bust some of them out. Because uh, we did have some classic ones, and and hopefully I will, just so we can kind of preview uh, some of the jerseys that we got. We were lucky enough to wear, especially our civil rights games for 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 two for two years. So, uh, sure. it, opening day, exciting time, and everybody knows uh, Cincinnati. It's a spectacle. Opening day, uh, you know, with the parade and being the oldest team in all of baseball, uh, it's a great time. And there's there's no better t- there's no better time. Everybody's zero zero. Everybody's in first place. Uh, the stadiums are packed, lots of high hopes. And, you know, on the player side, especially this year, you know, you got a lot of new players coming in. So there's going to be a bit of a, a little bit of jitters going into this. And, sure. you know, for the other guys, they're going to be looking for, you know, they're going to be looking to bounce back. They're going to look on to build. And uh, I think they understand, hopefully, going into Cincinnati is that you guys, if, you know, if they play their ass off, you know, the, 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 they're going to come out. They're going to come out. They've always been a hard nose blue collar city of all respect to just battling. And Paul, we had this conversation the other day. You, you had a tough series rice lost two of three to UTSA this weekend. But the one positive that you sh- that you brought back from is that the guys battled. And I think that's a direct correlation to what this club is going to have to experience this year. They're ranked 28th in the power rank MLB power rankings this year. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, through these re- rebuilding processes, we just want to see guys go out there, fight, play great baseball, and let the cards fall where they may. Yeah, man. I, I think one of the things to touch on with regards to the battling, you know, we always say in baseball, the old adage is just not how you start, it's how you finish. You know, it's a long season, blah, blah, blah. Well, I think in these circumstances, when you've got a lot of uncertainty, you, you've got a lot of young players you know, you've got a team that is not maybe quite sure who it is yet with regards to an identity yet. I I think the way you start is significant. We've touched on before how last season obviously didn't start well, and I think it kind of prolonged itself, you know, kind of perpetuated throughout the season, unfortunately. So I I actually would argue the opposite in this, in this circumstance, man, I think it's huge how this team starts. I think with regards to some of those young players, both on the mound and in the field position player wise, I think them getting getting off to a good start is 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 going to be maybe more significant than than with some teams. Hundred percent. You you'd have to be crazy to think that the the team's ability to succeed doesn't doesn't there isn't a direct correlation with just being at the plate or going into a slump. When you get into that type of losing that type of losing mentality, and you go three and fourteen to start the season or whatever it is, you have to imagine that that becomes the 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 psychology behind the team. No different than if you're stepping in the box and you've gone three for three for thirty one. It's something if you can get out, you can get out of the box hot. You put that belief down and that that winning culture starts to circulate er, early in the season. It's an absolute game changer. Yeah, you got to believe. See what I did there. Believe, you know, and that's you've. uh, I see. Well, you've added the jersey today. You've had. You got the Reds (laughs) banner, but I think uh, I'm gonna have to bring a little bit of Ted Lasso in here if you haven't seen the latest episode and bring my that believe right here. And that's what we're doing. Reds believe in the Reds. Believe in the Reds. I'm in. But hey, being being serious, taking it back to what you said about the uh, the the fan base too, man. Because you know, there's some there's some angst there with how things are going to go. And again, going back to it, it can snowball in a good way. The team gets off to a good start, you know, understanding that, you know, you might have Joey on the deal to start. You may have a Senzel on the deal to start a couple of those maybe key pieces, but if the team starts good, man, you and I both know that city can, can, uh, can, can hop on the hop on the train in a hurry, which again, in this, 
in this environment, I think it can snowball, man. Those young players start to feel the city, the fan base behind them, you know, get a little good pub. And, and it's, that's, that's a huge piece of that, uh, the, the psychology of, of, of getting things going in the right direction. Absolutely. I think it's going to be fascinating to see what, what, um, what occurs uh, going into the first week or two, because it can go a number of ways. I think it's a really complex dynamic. Uh, what what's being experienced in Cincinnati, uh, not just from a personnel standpoint, but just from an ownership standpoint, and how the 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 city is receiving, um, you know, some of the the negativity, uh, and that is often felt by the players. And so when you go in, you're having a, a new club come in, and with the frustration over ownership and and the and last season, there's going to be a big question if that's going to spill out onto the field and affect the young players. Uh, and, um, you know, and, and patience is a big thing. And I, I, I think you, we really just have to understand it's, that's the key word this year is patience and getting off the ground and letting these guys fight it out the, the first couple of weeks. Um, but hopefully we don't get into a position to where we get out, there's a bad start and that, that energy is start to felt by being felt by the, the new players that are just trying to establish themselves in the league. And that can be a really tough situation to be in. But again, you know, positive, positive vibes going to Cincinnati, you know, not a whole lot of be better cities to have opening day. Um, you know, one of my I, I think I was so excited uh, one year you were staying at the the Millennium was it was a team hotel and was <laughs> headed to the ballpark and we had the sliding doors, revolving door. And it was kind of like in between. It could have either opened up or it could have closed really quick. And I figured I'd just kind of go for go for the small crack. And as soon as I made this like this lunging gesture to get into it, it closed and this swinging door came in It squared me up right in the middle of the face. And so it hit me right on the side, like right up under my eye and it swole up on the way to the, on the way to the field. It right. I got black. And so I remember my, my second opening day, I was in, I was in the clubhouse with what we call the pink magic patch. Mm -hmm. And you know, right. the, you know, the pink, if you don't know about the pink magic patch, it's yeah. not available everywhere. And it's super exclusive, kind of a big league only right. type of deal. But I tell you what, if you've ever followed a ball off your shin, off your ankle, off your toe, or any type of bruise, even get smoked by a pitch, you put this pink patch on and this, the swelling, the discoloration is gone within a matter yeah. of hours. This thing is incredible. So if you can imagine that, it's not four faces. I spent most of my time in the locker room prepping for, for opening day, my first start, and I have this pink patch uh, on my face to try to reduce this swelling after getting smoked in the door. And so that was one of my, that's one of my opening day story, opening day stories. Cause it actually made, it actually made the news somehow the word got out that I got smoked by a door and it was yeah. in, uh, I forget what the name of that, that publication is. Um, uh, it, Barstool wasn't around, but it, it popped up in something like Chris Dickerson has, you know, has fight with uh, revolving door on opening day um but couldn't, couldn't couldn't have no better guy dicky couldn't have you know, no better guy it happens it's uh you know you know me you know my career is par for the course me running mm -hmm. into a door you know it's uh you know i, I think you know i borderline klutz uh yeah. but yeah. you know it, it is what it is and uh how about yourself Fa favorite favorite memory Man, I, for me, you know, you'll just uh, being in the opening day lineup and since he there's just to your point, like there's a lot of a lot of build up there. There's the parade, you know, which our boy Bronson and in uh, Danny Graves, I believe, are going to be like the the marshals in the parade for opening day this year. But that's all a big deal there. I, it you know, but for me, I was I only started on on that one opening day in Cincinnati while I was there. So it was that that for me is my biggest memory. And but again, it's just the overall, it, it's just one of those deals where, and I'm, I'm excited for those young players because it's one of those deals where you just are looking up at the scoreboard, you're looking at the stands, you're looking at all of the stuff that's going on and you're like, holy crap, man, this is pretty cool. Like there's, it's just one of those things where, you know, we got people all over the country playing college baseball, playing little league baseball and, you know, being on a big league field on a, on a, on a big league first base or third baseline on opening day, getting your name introduced, listening to the anthem is, is something that is, 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 is pretty tough to beat for me. But yeah, the flyover, the pageantry around it, you know, having the red, white, and blue and the ribbons all around the ballpark and having that big opening day, you know, decal on the field. And, um, and then just a lot of the teams just digging in their history and having, you know, guys like Danny and Bronson coming out, having some of the, the all-time greats. I know uh, A.J. Burnett's going to be throwing out the first pitch in Pittsburgh with Russell to commemorate their uh, their run in 2013. Mm -hmm. So that's a great connection between 
uh, you know, the, the current club and bringing back these old guys, knowing how much important, how important opening day is. Um, and of course the flyover, I'm a big flyover guy. You know, I was the, sure. I was the fourth grader in, in library class going through military aircraft books. So that's my favorite part. <laughs> Uh, 100% having uh, having Wright Air Force Base, which is a which is a badass Air Force Base, uh, having that flyover. It's yeah, special, man. man. It's a good time. And you just you just want that. You just want that win like that, that just being able to go out there, battle, exhale at the end of it, uh, get that first season, that first season dub, get on the board a little bit. And hopefully I think we have, you know, I have, we have the, 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 guy, the guys to do it this year. Hunter Hunter Green named opening day starter this year. Yep. Uh, I, that for me, that's, that's a trip. Um, I wouldn't say y'all, I was emotional, y'all, y'all got but, a, but I yeah, definitely, y'all got, a, y'all got a relationship, right? Y'all, y'all, y'all are tight. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, that's my guy. Uh, so it's going to be, it's interesting for me. It's going to be, uh, you know, seeing another 21 out there from, from my high school, you know, remembering Hunter as a young scrawny 13 year old phenom at Notre Dame high school, seeing him at shortstop and then just be able to grow with him throughout his career. You know, when he got hurt going through Dayton, uh, it's, it's a special thing to see, uh, for me in particular. And I know, you know, just him, just living up to the ex- expectations, uh, going on the run that he had last year, but also just understanding what it took for him to get here, the, the, the hype, the expectations, but for young pitchers that, you know, in this game, it's a development process coming out of high school, you know, understanding the, the coaching process, what he's supposed to be doing on a daily basis, where, you know, finding his rhythm, his bad outings, uh, just learning how to pitch. And it's, it's been a journey and um, I'm just, I'm so excited. I know our high school coach is fired up. The only high school coach in the league who's got two 21 number 21 reg jerseys in his, in his office, uh, both, both from the same high school. So it's, it's special. And I think Hunter is going to have a tremendous year if he can continue that same form that he, he had last year. And really setting the tone for that uh, for that pitching staff. Uh, yeah, he just, he he just needs to be healthy, right? Like the all of those guys at the top, they just need to be healthy. It's part of the development process. What, what's super exciting from a red standpoint is Hunter Green's a unique talent, right? We can agree on that. But the fact that you got that kind of guy that that's young, that's hungry, that is your opening day guy. I mean, there's a lot to be excited about moving forward. And then Lodola's right behind them with Ashcraft right behind them. But all those guys are. Or, or relatively young and in their career as well. So, I mean, it's in terms of a nucleus, a core, we need them to be healthy and you need them to get the, uh, you know, the appropriate seasoning that, that they're going to get this year. I mean, it, hopefully they're, they're all lights out the whole year, but in all likelihood, there's, that's not going to be the case and that's good for him too. But to me, the the thing to highlight is, is the age of, of that group and the, the hope and the expectation, not just this year, but, but in the next three to five years, you know what I mean? A hundred percent. And, you know, watching Hunter up close and understanding his development, uh, not just, you know, not just trusting the, the pitches and just learning when to, to go full bore. Like there's so many different there's so many idiosyncrasies and so many complexities to being a big league pitcher from a mental and a physical standpoint, obviously keeping keeping everybody healthy, but understand that they don't have to do too much. I think that often falls on a lot of young players that they feel like they have to take they have to put the team on their back. Um, and then they have to win the game with every pitch. And that's not the case. I think understanding that, you know, from a situational standpoint, getting out there, taking it hitter by hitter, pitch by pitch. That's when I saw Hunter be at his best is when he was starting to break the d- game down and not trying to do not trying to do the most with every with every at bat, with every outing. And just sure. understanding as we make if we make pitches, you execute and we trust in trust in our stuff, trust in our ability, trust in our defense, then that we're going to be fine. And I think that's one of the things that young players have to understand, especially going with a young team on opening day. It's a lot of pressure, but it's you got to break it down piece by piece. We go out. We're not looking for, you know, we're not looking for, you know, this. We're not worried about the success. We're just trying to get better and yep. get po- and get positive results. Just we were talking about with w- what you got going on at Rice right now. We want positive results and we just want to see incremental progress we know it's the, we proce- it's yeah. the process man like what, what you're describing what i'm hearing you say is it's the process it's about the process fall in love with the process like if you take care of what control what you could control a guy like hunter green's a great example like because of the ability the rest is going to take care of itself like is it going to be good every time i mean you're pitching the big leagues is somebody going to turn 102 round sure they are right if you make a good slider maybe he was looking for it gets a gets a big hit with two outs okay but the process, like did there, everything that you could control, did you do it appropriately? And if that's the case, over the course of time, 
you bank on the results being being more good than bad, right? Yeah, hundred percent. That's that's exactly the philosophy that I hope that these guys can take going into the season. Uh, it's a process, I and mean, I feel like Billy being in here in Moneyball, it's a process, a process. Right. Uh, you know, going Chavi, what are you swinging at? You couldn't hit that if you fell out of with a boat. The process, <laughs> see more pitches. You know, uh, then having yeah. that that great music, and you know, I like, I would love to see that is putting that putting that Moneyball soundtrack to the to the Rojos uh, yep. first couple weeks, and just you know, just seeing how thing plays out, but. You know, there's really no expectations. Also, on the other point, that's another good point that I want to make is that to see the value in not having expectations, everybody expects you to finish 29th or the last in the league. Like you have no choice but to go out and prove and prove everybody wrong. It's not like you guys are champ. You're not championship contenders and you have to come out firing hot. It's like. We're gonna do the little things that are gonna make us great, and we're gonna we're gonna work on our stuff, and we're just gonna we're just gonna go out there and just get better. Progression, progression, progression. Uh, and like I said, see see where the see where the chips fall because you know they they have the talent uh, with the coaching staff. It's just putting the due, due diligence in, and uh, and um, you know we'll see. But it's it's yeah. all it's all so exciting. Yeah, yeah for day. sure, for sure. Hey, so flipping script, getting on the position player side, right? Um, a couple of interesting things. I think the Barrera kid's going to start it short, which is exciting. He's supposed to be a pretty, uh, pretty elite defender that's trying to get his feet on the ground offensively to become an everyday player, so to speak. Reminds me a little bit maybe of a Miguel Rojas back in the day, uh, who's, yeah. who's now turned himself into a very good big league player, right? Been the shortstop in Miami the last couple of years over in L.A. now. But excited to see what Barrero's got. India obviously is, you know, just getting his career going. Hopefully I think it's big for him to be a, become like a piece that is establishing himself a little bit more, you know, you know. going into junior year, junior year, That's right. you got, That's right. you, you got to start putting those n- numbers down. No more the sophomore time slump. The time yeah, you're dialing it. Recruiting letters are coming in. It's time to start making some decisions. Yep. That's right. So you got steer, I think is going to play third to start. It looks like in the opening day lineup over there at third base. And um, so the left side of the infield is going to be young, man. Like we talked about earlier, you got Kevin Newman waiting in the wings to kind of, solidify the um maybe the psychology of those guys early in the season to get them going stevenson behind the plate is um is is somebody who everybody thinks is going to be good but he needs to do it and ultimately stay healthy you got the two guys behind him that are going to help with casali and mailey and um then you got joey right he's he's going to start the season on the on the injured list it sounds like but um he made some comments the other day that i'm sure you saw that something referencing like he's either going to be good or he's going to retire which I, i think that maybe that feasibly could be misinterpreted by some fans but you and i i think both understand what he's saying there is hey just in case you're wondering like i'm gonna be ready to go and 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 i I actually love hearing that because if anybody is going to put accountability on themselves it's joey so i i actually think that's a really good sign for reds fans what do you got on that yeah 100 percent. i'm right there with you i think uh I, it doesn't come across in the paper as we know Joey to be, because I think Joey's saying that with a smirk on his face. Right. Um, so I don't, you know, I take it with a, I take it with a grain of salt, and I think everybody else should too. Um, he's going to come out, he's going to do everything in his power to get ready, because that's just what Joey does. Um, I think him just kind of, you know, saying he's going to throw in the white towel isn't Joey. So again, taking it with a grain of salt, he's doing everything possible to get back to get back and to, to finish this career. Cause I don't, Joey doesn't know anything else other than to be prepared at all possible. Maybe even potentially he's probably overanalyzing it. Like you said, in typical Joey fashion where, you know, he's, you know, he hasn't played nine innings. Um, I think getting that to getting, getting back to that point to where he feels completely comfortable to, to compete at all aspects of the game is ultimately where, what Joey is focusing on right now. It's not just about getting the at bats and, and stepping in. He's got to be he's got to be functional and feel like he's at an elite level uh, for all nine innings. Yeah, no doubt, man. And, and, and look, here's the thing too: with a guy like that, you you need him. It's the sum of the whole is is what is what we're worried about. We're not worried about not to take anything away from opening day, which obviously we're building up, but like being healthy for opening day versus being ready to go for the entire duration of the six month season. We can obviously agree what's more important, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and part of the acquisition, the, the off season acquisition, acquisition of having, um, Will Myers, having Will Myers come in. And I think that's, we commented on that in the first se- second episode. That's a huge thing is when you, and when Joey needs a blow, you have Will Myers there to, to, to hold it down at first base. And so having a power, you know, power right-handed batter, especially at that ballpark, I said that earlier is that the 
Will's strength is going to play is going to play really well in that ballpark, and yeah. you know he has power to go to all fields. So I, I think there was a huge opportunity. You have another former All Star coming in, filling in for Joey until Joey gets ready. But I feel one hundred percent comfortable uh, with what was what Will brings to the table uh, yeah. coming in coming into opening day and be able to fill yeah. that role. And then when Joey gets back, then we can show the the true nature of this. A, a, essentially what I think is going to be the symbiotic relationship where they're going to be rotating at first and then and rotating through at, at DH to keep each other fresh. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, Hey, don't sleep on Jason Vossler, who I think is actually probably going to start at first and we'll make, play right tomorrow, but we'll see, we'll see what, what, what David Bell has in store, but there's a couple of pieces there and I'm with you on the Will Myers deal because of the versatility you get Nick Senzel back later on. And you know, when I'm not exactly sure what the estimated time on his return is, but he can do some things, right. Play the outfield, play second, play third, spell some guys and, and get guys the opportunity to get hot and mix and match in that lineup, which, you know, is kind of the, the new age deal of, of, of creating the versatility and, and the consistency in the lineup. Yeah, absolutely. Why didn't you ever play outfield? I feel like Dude, back in the day, hey, they were, I think, well, also. Man, I, I, I tried to a- get in the outfield. I tried. I tried. I told Dusty, I'm like, I ordered a glove in spring training. I'm like, bro, I got to add it to the resume. He's like, it, it, ultimately, it came down to, and you know me well enough, this isn't really my deal. But like, it, it was like, if I was going to go on the field, I had to be on the dirt, man. It was, they had to bump somebody else. It was, it was like, if you're going to be on the field, man, we need you to catch it and throw it straight on the dirt. So That's I right. tried to get in the outfield. It just never worked out. So you, yeah. So you, you tried to get on that. You tried to get on the outfield as opposed to Joey wanted no part of the outfield and they threw him in the outfield. And those are still to to this day, some of the most enjoyable experiences that I've ever had in baseball is being in the outfield with Joey when he was just learning how to play left field. Uh, And that it was just, it was a spectacular sight every single day. Um, So, but to, but, but to that point is that is now the philosophy that, that all, a lot of these players are approaching is being able to play, to be versatile, to play first, third, right, the corner, the corner spots. Yeah. Um, and I think even, uh, during world baseball class, you saw, you know, Mookie, you know, playing a lot of, a lot more second base. And so that's just, that's where we're at. And I think, as you said, you know, Vossler having this rotation, of being able to go corner to center and to have this rotation of, of utility guys. Uh, it's going to be something that's going to be seen across the league, but particularly it's going to be uh, vital to the the red success this year. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. And I, all that to say, like uh, that was, you know, highlighting the roster, highlighting the pitchers. The one thing that we didn't mention was Alexis Diaz at the end of the bullpen. Uh, you know, there's, I think, I personally think I'm going to make a call. I think he's going to become one of the elite guys in the league this year. It's unfortunate injury to his brother in New York, but who's already obviously very, very much so established himself. Alexis at the end of the bullpen, I think, you know, you got a couple of other pieces there, Buck Farmer, Fernando Cruz. Not sure how everything shakes out. I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of a opportunity for some of those other guys, but it is a pretty significant deal to have Alexis at the back end that you know is in all likelihood going to be the guy. Indeed. So we will see happening opening day tomorrow. We're going to wrap this up. Uh, Reds fans, enjoy the day. Uh, the time, The time is now. It is time. For, it is go is officially go time it is <laughs> press that launch button we're ready to go the parade is going to be tomorrow it's an exciting time uh enjoy it and i just um like we said we just want the want the guys to go out there and battle um but it's a new season everybody's in first place uh and i hope this is a season we start to see uh we start to see the return of, of cincinnati baseball a good you know hard-nosed baseball get the fans back out there and um you know as former reds just understanding the the the, the city in itself, um, yep. you know, we're excited for tomorrow and to see what this season holds. So uh, for everybody, thank you again for tuning in. Go drop us a like. If you're on YouTube, drop us a comment. Uh, me and Paul, we'll be seeing you next week. Thanks for tuning in. This is Farm to the Show with Paul Yonish and Chris Dickerson. Believe it.